Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas effects tutorial for you. And in this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make Sub-Zero's Ice Sword from the new Mortal Kombat movie, and it looks something like this. If you want to make an Ice Sword that looks like that, stick around. First thing you want to do is record a close up of yourself with a camera, DSLR, or cell phone, or something. Just a close up of your face and your hands in front of your face, pretending to hold a sword in your right hand while moving your left hand away from your right hand, opening it up kind of like you're creating an ice sword. Now, once you've recorded that, keep that in the back of your mind. We're going to be utilizing that later. So, inside Vegas Effects, what we're going to do is do a new composite shot. Click that, and we're going to do 1080p, 1920 by 1080. I like to make my frame rate 23.97. And for the duration, we're just gonna make it like, let's just say five seconds. Hit okay, great. Now the first thing we're gonna do is click new layer right here, and we're gonna click plane. This plane is gonna be your entire sword. Let's change the color to something we can easily see. I'm gonna change the color to something around this like middle gray area, hit okay, hit okay. So now we're gonna choose our mask pen tool up here to the top middle, and we're gonna draw the rough shape of our sword. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be jagged. You can actually make it fairly smooth here. So I'm gonna start with the handle, and then I'm gonna kind of go up from here. Then I'll make it have kind of like a dual spike area. And then bring it back to a handle point. Once you've connected your mask points, it's going to mask out everything around it. Optionally, you can add more masks to this for like a center circle or something like this. And for each little circle you add, you're gonna to wanna to change it from add to subtract. Next, we're gonna open our effects tab and search for the effect fractal noise. Once you find that, you can drag and drop it onto your layer. Under the effect tree, open it up, and we're gonna change a C, change it to anything you want. I'm just gonna put, you know, 89, how about that? And then open up Transform, and go to Scale, and we're gonna change this to 20 pixels. You can collapse everything and enable Motion Blur right here next to the name. Then we're gonna right click, and then we're gonna say Make Composite Shot. And we're gonna call this one Sword. And we wanna make sure we move Masks, Effects, and Transform properties with it. So we'll click this button, hit OK. And now down here, we have our Sword Composite Shot, and then we're gonna go over to Composite Shot 1, and then we're gonna add a new plane again. So new layer, plane, we're gonna call this plane two, and then hit okay. This solid layer is gonna give us texture, shape, and depth to our sword. So next, go over to fractal noise again and drag and drop it onto your plane. Once you've done that, right click on your plane and say make composite shot. And we're gonna call this one shape BG. Move with the current layer button, make sure that one's pressed, hit okay. And now we see our shape BG in our own layer right down here. Go back to composite shot one, now we see both of our composite shots inside our composite shot one. Drag shape background to the bottom of the layer so sword's on top of it. And then we're gonna hide this layer. Right click on sword, go to properties, and we're gonna go to advanced. And I like to change max samples to 50. I'm gonna do that with both of them. Right click, properties, advanced, max samples, 50. When I do this, it makes my motion blur look so much better. Now, we're gonna be adding a bunch of effects only to the sword layer and keeping the shape background hidden the whole time. So first effect we're gonna add is Chrominator. So go up to your effects, type C-H-O-R-M-E, and we're gonna drag Chrominator onto our sword. Chrominator will give it the bumpy ice look. So under our sword, we're gonna go to effects tree, Chrominator, and then we're gonna choose our source layer and change that to shape BG. And by doing that, it makes the sword look so much better. Then we're gonna change the reflection distance to 1.5. Next, we're gonna add an energy distortion. So take away Chrome and type energy and we're gonna see energy distortion under the distort folder. We're gonna drag and drop that onto our sword, and this will give our sword some outer texture and some formation movement. So we can collapse the Chrominator effects tree and open up energy distortion, and go down here, and under the mask, we're gonna change that to shape BG. And we can see it makes our sword look that much more textury around the edges, it looks pretty cool. Now if you were to play it, you're gonna see it kind of waving around like this, but that's okay, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Under distortion, we're gonna change this to 50 pixels to really give it a bumpy ice outer look. Go down to the animation tree, change wind speed to 0.1 and noise speed to 0.5. Now for both of these, make sure you select a little circle beside the name and that enables keyframing for both of them. Now, depending on how long you want your animation to be, you're gonna move the cursor on the timeline forward either two or three seconds, depending on how long you want it to reveal. So I'm gonna say right in the middle, two, 12. Now I'm gonna change my wind speed to zero and I'm gonna change my noise speed also to zero. 
So what that does is that solidifies the position anytime after this formation. After my two seconds and 12 frames, it is not gonna move, it's gonna keep its bumpy texture. But at the beginning, it's gonna wave and then solidify. So collapsed energy distortion over here on the left and go back to your effects and we're gonna type in luminance key. So L-U-M and we're gonna find luminance key and drag and drop that onto your sword. And this is gonna give us some slight transparency like ice may have. Open up the effects tree under luminance key. Make sure the key taps on key out darker. Threshold, we're gonna change that to zero. And tolerance, we're gonna change that to 0.5. So now we zoom in, we're gonna see some transparency. But if you notice, you'll see some blurry spots right here. And if you wanna get rid of those, that's actually over in energy distortion. If you open back up that tree and go to diffusion strength, if you drag that to zero, that gets rid of all those little blurry spots. So now if you wanna see this transparency, we can go to the options and do enable checkerboard background. And now you'll see the checkerboard behind the ice right there. Now time to make it look more like ice. So collapse the luminance tree and go over to the effects and type in color correction. And we're gonna find color correction wheels. You can do this multiple different ways, but this is just how I colored this ice. So I'm gonna drag and drop this onto my sword, open up the effects tree, open up just the mid tones. I'm gonna change the strength to 0.78 and I'm gonna change the hue to 208. And that gives me a nice bluish look, pretty strong colored blue, and that's what I like. But again, you can do it however you want, make it whatever color you want. So collapse that tree, and lastly, we're gonna go back up to the effects, and we're gonna type in light wrap. And this is gonna brighten the edges by keeping the center more saturated, kinda of how like you'd see thinner ice being a little bit desaturated and thicker ice being full of color. So I'm gonna drag and drop this onto my sword, open up the effects tree, source layer, we're gonna drop that down and change that to shape BG. Radius, I'm going to change that from 20 to 40. Go to the blend mode and change it from lighten to color dodge. And that really lightens up the edges right here while still keeping it transparent. And that's looking really cool to me. And now we're done with the swords. Let's look at what this looks like. Looks pretty cool. So next we're going to move on to masking. So we can collapse light wrap and then we can collapse sword. And now we want to create the mask inside the sword itself. So all the effects get applied to that mask as well. So we're gonna select the sword. We're gonna scroll out a little bit on our viewport. Get the mask pen tool again. Don't forget to make sure your cursor on your timeline is back all the way to zero. Now from here, we're gonna draw a mask, but we're gonna add a few extra points because we wanna animate this mask to make it look like it's really expanding nicely. So I'm gonna zoom in to the left over here and I'm gonna start with maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I'm gonna move down and draw a big old box around this whole scene and connect them. So under my mask properties on the left-hand side, I'm gonna click the invert button. And now if I move this whole thing, it's gonna reveal with the shape I made right there. So I'm gonna bring that back to the left so the whole sword's hidden. So on the left-hand side under the mask tree, we go under transform and select the circle next to path to enable path transformation animation. And now we take the cursor on our timeline and move it forward however long your animation was, which mine was two seconds and 12 frames. So I'm gonna bring it right there, and I'm gonna double click any one of these points and drag it to the right. And that's gonna reveal the sword. Once the sword is completely revealed, I'm going to stop moving. And so now we look, we have our animation revealing. So now to make this look just a little bit better, I'm going to click away from the mask, then zoom in. And then I'm gonna take these points that are to the left of this curve and I'm gonna move them in front of the right curve. And I'll show you why here in a second. So I'm gonna take this point and drag it forward, take this point, drag it to the right, this point, drag it to the right, and this one, drag it to the right, and this one, drag it to the right. So now, if we move the timeline back, you'll see the points going back to the original spot. And so if we collapse everything and then deselect any layers, then we play it, it's being revealed in a really cool way. And since our mask is animating on here, we wanna add some motion blur on this layer. So we're gonna take the sword and click motion blur. And then just to be safe, we can add motion blur to our shape background. And if we zoom in, we can see, if we disable motion blur and re-enable it, that it's being added to the mask as it's moving. Once you're happy with your sword and the animation time, you can select both of your layers, right click, make composite shot again, and call this complete sword. And now if you go back to composite shot one, we see our complete sword right here. Now that we have our fully animated sword, we're gonna go ahead and add it to our scene. So under media, go ahead and drag and drop the clip you recorded of yourself, and then drag it into our media timeline, make sure it's underneath our sword layer so our sword can be seen. So right about here is where my clip ends. Right now I'm gonna hide my sword layer and then I'm gonna track my hand. So if I open up the tree under my footage and go to tracks, hit the plus sign, it's gonna take me to my layer window and I'm gonna open my tracker tab. 
So I'm gonna drag these two onto a point of my hand where I know it's gonna track really nicely. And make sure the cursor in your timeline is at the very beginning. And then once you're ready, hit the play button and that's gonna track it. Once you're done, we wanna apply this tracking data to a point. So we need to go over to new layer and do point. And we're gonna call this tracked hand. So go back to our tracker and then over here to the apply to layer, we're gonna choose the layer, drop down and choose tracked hand and hit apply. And now all of our tracking motion data is applied to this point. So we can go back to our viewer tab in the middle window. We can collapse the original footage. We can unhide our complete sword. And we can go over to the right hand side where it says none. And this is our parenting menu. We're gonna click this and we're gonna parent it to our tracked hand point. So now we can see the sword is moving with our hand. Of course, we wanna add motion blurs to make sure that's enabled on your sword. So whenever you're moving, your sword can have some motion blur as well. Also, if you go to the properties to the bottom left and then go to advanced, change the max samples, to 50 for the composite shot one. Next, take your sword, open up the tree, go down to transform, and we're gonna scale it up and make sure it's the right size and in the right position. So I'm gonna do the scale maybe to like 200 and then move the position around. And I'm noticing that it looks like when I move my hand across, it's forming faster than I'm moving my hand. So I can change that very easily. So I'm gonna go over to my complete sword tab, drop down the sword, go to masks, find my mask, drop that down to the transform and the path, and I'm gonna go all the way to the right, and right where the 212 is, I'm gonna move that over to the three second mark. And now our formation is 12 frames longer. And so if I go back to my composite shot one, we can see what that looks like. And that follows my hand much better. Cool. Next, we wanna make the handle look like it's behind the fingers. So under the complete sword layer, go to masks, and then we're gonna choose the pen tool, and we're gonna scroll in and draw around the finger. And once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and invert the mask. And now we deselect any layers. We can see that the handle looks like it's behind the finger, but it's kind of like harshly, it's real, real hard cut there. You can either go into your complete sword and go to your mask and go to your shape and then change the feather strength and then adjust it that way. Or what I'm gonna do is put that back to zero. I'm gonna go ahead and add some blur to this to make it look like it's out of focus, just like my hand is out of focus in this scene. So I'm gonna go to the effects. I'm gonna type in blur. And I'm just gonna drag and drop the blur onto the complete sword. And now my sword is blurred and it looks and it looks really good. And now if we play it back and forth, that looks really good. I'm happy with that result. And then once you're happy with it, you can add all sorts of stuff to this graded, add effects, particles, motion blur, shake, anything you want to make this look really good. And then you can have a final result, something similar to this. And there you have it. You now know how to make a really cool looking ice sword that can be applied to multiple different effects and be styled in many different ways. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.